I first received my Starlink unit in the middle part of February 2021, after months and months of eagerly awaiting its arrival. And the early impressions were all very, very good. The speeds were pretty good, the upload was pretty good, the latency I was very surprised by. Then came March and early April, where latency was kind of flaky, downtime was rampant. And it looks like we're back to another downturn here. I had a lot of issues with getting a consistent internet connection for more than 10 to 15 minutes straight, and the speeds continued to be what they were when it was released. But now, here we are, early May 2021, and I have to say, Starlink has gotten a whole lot better after some updates. So, bottom line up front, do I recommend Starlink? It continues to be something I would recommend for people that live in rural parts of the world or don't have a good, stable internet connection. It's easy to set up, less than 10 to 15 minutes before you're able to get online. It's a great service, as long as you're not expecting truly high-speed internet. Generally speaking, I'm getting somewhere between about 180 to 240 megabits per second download, which is great. And of course, latency remains very good as well, somewhere in the neighborhood of 40 to 50 milliseconds, which I continue to be rather surprised by. But if you live in a city, a more urban area where you have really good stable internet connections, don't waste your time with Starlink, and better yet, don't pick up Starlink because you might be taking it away from somebody who does need it in a more remote area if they do live in yourself. So why I got Starlink, I have a fiber internet connections technically from a company called Mediacom here in Eastern Iowa. The problem is I have downtime, a lot. My internet will randomly go down for two to three hours every single day in the weekday. They have come to try and fix this problem many, many times. It has gotten better, but when Starlink first opened up to my area, my internet connection was awful. And I work from home sometimes. My girlfriend who lives upstairs, she runs a business, she works from home. We need internet 100% of the time. So one thing that was so great about adding Starlink to the mix is that it gave us redundancy. We had two internet connections. If one went down, we had another rock solid one. I wouldn't trust Starlink with doing a video conference back then. Now though, it's a much different story. So as of early May 2021, the downtime with Starlink is now measured in usually seconds to just single minutes of time. Compared to Starlink when I first got it, downtime could be 10 to 15 minutes a day, which may not sound like a lot, but usually it's down for 30 to 45 seconds throughout the day that adds up to that amount. So it's a very tedious problem to have. But now, the stability of Starlink is what's so surprising to me as more and more satellites continue to launch, more and more satellites continue to get operational. So, who is Starlink for? It continues to be for people who don't have good internet. This is not gonna be a replacement for a fiber internet or a cable internet line. That's not what Starlink is for. But if you live in really remote areas where you may not even have a high-speed option, that is where Starlink excels, and that's where I continue to recommend. In terms of the gaming front, a lot of people want to know about gaming, especially on my channel, because that's kind of how I market myself towards a little bit. I've now been able to do, as of late April, early May, I've now been able to do several consecutive hours of gaming before the connection would go down. And usually, again, Starlink would only go down for a few seconds at a time, usually because there's a missing satellite or beta downtime, which could be a whole number of things that we don't exactly know. So gaming performance remains very, very strong, especially here in the central part of the country. Oh, look at the ping. Now up to low 70s, mid 70s. So and then we're right back down to the 40s. I get latencies in games like Call of Duty 40 to 60 milliseconds at times. The one problem with gaming is that it continues to have spikes. Usually from what I can kind of Ugh. determine is when Starlink is jumping from one satellite to another satellite, which may also be changing which ground station I'm connected to. And during that process, you tend to see a spike in latency before it stabilizes once again. But in terms of gaming, it is very, very strong. I wouldn't recommend for competitive esports gaming, 
if it's like money on the line, but even for more than just casual gaming, it is pretty enjoyable. So now, the downside. Starlink is a great service. There's a lot of really good things with Starlink. Two things remain an issue. One is not 100% time uptime. That's the one thing that continues to be a problem, especially if you rely on things like video conferencing for either work or school. That is where things will be an issue. The other downside of Starlink remains the upload speeds. My upload, generally speaking, is only around 10 to 20 megabits per second, which is great, again, if you didn't have a good internet connection before, but if you're trying to do things like upload videos or really upload a lot of large files, you're gonna have issues with SpaceX Starlink. And that continues to be a huge downside of Starlink. Not only for users, but also for Starlink themselves. Many states and federal regulators are throwing out money trying to solve the rural broadband dilemma, trying to bring internet where it doesn't exist now. That's a huge issue that politicians continue to try and fix. The requirement though, for many of these states and agencies, while they can get 100 megabit per second down, they cannot get sustained 100 megabit per second up. And that is a requirement for many states funding. And that's one issue where Starlink will continue to be a problem. So wrapping up this video, do I recommend Starlink 100% if you're in a rural area? If you're in an urban area where you have a solid internet connection, there's absolutely no need to get the Starlink dish. Not only is it more difficult to not get obstructions inside of the city, it's just also not gonna be as competitive to some of the cable providers and fiber providers out there. If you're in rural America, it's a no brainer. Why wouldn't you get this if you didn't have good internet connections before? The stability in all kinds of weather is something that's really surprising to me. Snow, rain, thunderstorms, and really windy days like today, it continues to remain strong. So of course, we're gonna see where this goes. It's of course always very important to remember that Starlink is not in its final form. Satellites continue to be launched and we're nowhere near where they want to be in terms of the total internet constellation. There was recent approval to lower the satellites a little bit more in future launches, thus even helping latency more, which is crazy to me. So Starlink is an exciting service, I'm very happy to be a part of it. And of course, you can continue to follow along my channel for more updates on Starlink as we go along. Hit that subscribe button, get the notifi notifies for videos, and also check out all sorts of other random videos on this channel. We got all sorts of weird things from storm chasing to news to specials on weather. A lot of weird stuff on this channel. Hope you check it out and we'll see you again at the next video.